Hey class, so today we're going to be talking about kilns and the kind of stuff that you need to know about a kiln. So today we're going to my kiln room uh, and we're going to talk about the kiln and like how stuff works and all. Okay. Okay, first and foremost is this. So this is the kiln. I've got an electric kiln instead of the old school like knobs on the side kind of thing. Nice electrical unit. Uh, going over how to fire that and going all that stuff. But first, let's talk about the lid. So the kiln itself is made of fire brick. Now the refractory brick that this is that's in here. So you, I have a little piece of example of this right here. We have this refractory brick here. Uh, it's really light and uh, doesn't have any like when I tap on it, no sound like at all. But this is really. Um, light stuff but it holds heat really well uh some fireplaces are built with this so when you have a fire it goes all that heat goes into the brick and it, keep, it keeps really warm for super super long time uh and it, so that um because of all these little porous holes in it so all the heat has to get in there and, and hold in there and it, and it keeps it retains its heat really really well however they do make stronger brick which is what the kiln shovels are made of one of these things this is super heavy this one shelf for like 20 25 pounds maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it, it this this is heavy, uh, but it's made of refractory brick. Same kind of stuff, but it's not, uh, but it doesn't have holes in it so that you can stack the kit, stack the wear on there so that it can take weight and it's not it's extremely fragile. So this, that super fragile brick is all in the top of here. Do not, if you have your like, if your lid stays closed, like, like if you keep your lid down like this and you put a bunch of stuff and boxes on here. That is really dangerous and deadly to the kiln. We love our kiln. Don't don't hurt your kiln. Stop right now. Just like hit pause on the video. If this is in your room and you have stuff on top of it, just just pause. Go take care of that. Come back. I'll wait. Okay, we're good. All right. So you have a nice, empty. Nothing's on top of this kiln. This uh, the top of your kiln. That's good. Now, storing the kiln. Storing the lid, I keep it propped up like this so that one, nothing goes on top of it. That's like number one, the real reason why. Two, because I'm constantly loading wear in so that I can keep this, keep it moving without having to keep lifting this up and down, which it's really heavy. It's a heavy lid. Uh, and also keeps the hinge taut in the way that it's supposed to be built. Um, inside that kiln, lots of space, all the way down in there uh, to as you're loading in your wares. Now, if you need to know how to load a kiln, I have another video on that. Just look in the uh, playlist or maybe in the card. I think I put one up here. I'll check. If I didn't, it's in the playlist. All right, so today what we're going to talk about is how to fire the kiln and all the different variants of firing. Okay, so for firing the kiln, I have my panel right here on all the different modes that it does. On the side over here is usually where you have your knobs. Now, on so you'd have one, and they usually say three things, which is, or no, four, which is off, high, high, medium, low. Yeah, those are your three three temps. So now, if you're doing a bisque firing, what you're wanting to do as you as you load the kiln, as you load the ware in there, you need to do what's called a candling mode. The candling mode tells you it gets all of the physical water out of the clay. Now, for me, what I do, if I hit stop slow bisque and then I'm gonna start my bisque at cone 05 all right hold now when I go over to menu I have this one option for preheat for the preheat I'm gonna enter at let's do four hours and then when I hit review I'm going to preheat for four hours going to cone 05 which is 1888 um, and then it's going to hold for zero, but this is just a test part that I'm showing you. Reason we want to add those preheat hours in is again, so that we can bake out any physical water that we have left. If you have a old school manual kiln, turn all your knobs to low and you can leave the lid open. The hottest this thing is going to get is about 100 and 150 degrees. For the full digital kiln, it will get 200 degrees inside of it, and it'll hold at 200 for that t for that preheat time period. Uh, I do recommend closing the lid on this one because mine goes directly from preheat into the firing itself. For the manual kiln, you have to come back in and you have to change the knob, so just lower it then. But what you're caught having to do is getting that physical water to evaporate and get out of there. Um, I do. 
why it's good to keep the kiln the hood open if you're doing that and again if it's for me when i'm doing it i keep the lid closed uh, but i would recommend if you can leave it open so that all of that moist air that comes out of the clay doesn't get trapped in that top lid of the kiln uh, it's just moisture into that clay. It's causing it to wear down over time faster and that does, you know, hurt the kiln overall. Um, but just be mindful when you're doing that. Now, let's hit stop. Zero that out. I've zeroed that out. Now, if you're going into the bisque fire, so the way that I tell all my new teachers when they're firing a, a full-on manual kiln, turn them all to low and let that low heat for three, four hours minimum after the candling mode to get up to temp now this is with the lid closed fully so close the lid have them all set to low three to four hours minimum to getting that kiln up to a up to that higher temp what i like to do is on the top one up here i have these vent plugs and what you're going to do is you're going to plug that top one so as the heat comes up it's not escaping out that top vent which is going to cause the top part up here to heat faster so know that as the things are heating up that, that as you're heating up the kiln that if you have more sensitive wear that could have a possibility of popping it would pop if it was in the top so because i'm heating that section up faster it's gonna be more intense heat at the top after it's been sitting there for three to four hours then I'll switch it to medium and let it sit at medium again for another two to possibly three hours so right now we're at six to seven hours into the firing as it heats up to the medium I'm letting again all that chemical water slowly burning off so slowly coming up to temp slowly turning more towards the vitreous state of the clay uh, so after two to three hours sitting on medium, then switch it to high, let it go high the rest of the time until it melts the cone. I'll go over the cones in a minute. Now for the digital one, you're not having to sit there and babysit all of these the whole time. You sit there and you program in your program as to what you're going to fire, how you're going to fire, how long the duration of the fire is going to be. And the kiln does all of that math for you. You don't have to do it. That's why I love this thing. Oh, it makes my life so much easier. So as you're having to sit there and manually t turn up the temp, be aware as to what possibly is going on inside the kiln. That's the, that's the main thing I try and get all my new teachers to understand. As you're heating it up at the low levels, what's happening inside the kiln? The kiln is slowly making that wear come up higher on that temperature level. As it's going up higher, the chemical bronze that are holding that water into the clay are starting to release that. And that's going out into the atmosphere of the kiln. If I have some of my vent poles out, some of that moist air can escape out of it. Some of it can escape out at that seam at the top of the lid area here. It does come out, but some of it's still trapped. So you wanna make sure that as it's coming up to temp, slowly those gases are released so that you can ensure that your wear and your pieces come out properly. Um, again, going to medium, going to high, it's all doing the same thing. Just being consciously aware of how fast you're heating that clay up and what duration you're heating that clay up for. It just makes it so that your pieces come out sound at the end. This thing takes care of all those worries for me. Oh, it's so nice. Do make sure that after you are done, notice how it's 66, uh, after you are done, that you turn off the kiln also so that everything shuts down properly. If you have a kiln sitter inside, which every kiln has a kiln, should have a kiln sitter, uh, unless you're doing it full power, power meter, uh, testing the level of heat inside your kiln, you're doing it full manual, you're hardcore, my friend. I've only done that a couple times. I don't have time for that but you're going to make sure that your kiln is cooling down adequately as well now after the fire once it's reached up to temp the kiln co the cone inside of here will melt when that melts it'll it's got a pin drops the thermocouple um, and that'll turn shut off the kiln that shuts off all these panels because it's um, and, all, and your kiln setter that's on the side is also turned off if um, when that happens then wait until the kiln is cooled down if you're on a full manual and you cannot tell what temperature is inside that kiln don't open it until like it's it you like 12 to 24 hours minimum just let it sit it's not going to move it's not going to change if you open it up and that heat comes out you're having a thermal change which could then pop the pieces inside of it because they're cooling down too rapidly and that can also affect your clay so don't do that um, a, a good test that I do, uh, which is a burn test, um, you can take the end of the plug off. If you stick paper in here, I would stick it in um, in any of the holes over here, just stick a little piece of paper in. If that paper starts to char, burn, incinerate, full on, set on fire, 
too hot still. How hot is that? Very easy to tell. Paper incinerates at 450 degrees. So if it's charring at all, you're still in that 400 to 375 range. So minimum 300 degrees inside this thing. That's a hot oven. You don't want to just leave the lid of the oven open as it's going to burn your face off or burn your hands or harm a child. Things you don't want to do. So it's still way too hot for that. Again, you kind of learn over time how to guesstimate these the best that you can. The, the, the wedge also is a great thing to use as your cooling, as your kiln is cooling down. If you are, uh, you know, for a fact that it's been cooling at least 12 hours, then it's probably cool enough to take your wedge and just set your wedge in the top, let the kiln lid rest on the wedge. So it's only propping it open just like about like an inch and a half. And that's gonna vent out that air, that hot air faster, uh, cause the cool, cool down to happen a lot quicker. However, do th consider thermal shock. How much thermally is your clay gonna be changing in that time duration? If that becomes a problem for you, make sure you're aware of that. Okay, let's talk about cones real quick. Inside of your kiln, uh, if it's an old school manual kiln, you'll have the thermocouple that pokes out of the wall. <clears throat> so this little tip right here, doop, this right here is the thermocouple. It's, it has your pyrography measurements. It usually flows directly into your panel, which if it was an old school one like here, it should sit about right about here on your kiln. It's just about three or four levels down and it'll be in the main brain next to the kiln sitter. For mine, because it's in a full electric, uh, mine's right here, because it pokes right into the part of the kiln that you controls all that stuff. If you have that old school kiln, you're gonna need a series of cones. Now, in here I've got, you have all of these wonderful cones by Orton. Now, on the side of the cone, you have 50 cones in this nice large box. These are uh, freestanding cones. I would use these in a gas kiln, uh, because you have to, now, these cones are the large freestanding cones. These are witness cones. Reason that we use these in the gas kilns or, or bigger kilns in general, car kilns, uh, if you have any of those, if you have any of those and you're watching this video, I'm so glad you got this job. Um, now, for those of you who have who use these cones, <clears throat> you get a little sausage of clay, just a nice little nugget that you can then plant your cone into and you can look through the witness holes, which are the vent holes on the side of the kiln. They're also called witness holes. And you're gonna wait for, uh, to see them start to bend into the, in, during the firing. And when it starts to bend, that's when you're going to turn off the kiln. That's why I was talking about those of you that are working with a whole parameter probe, the um, hardcore man, that's what those are for. You want to get traditionally, they make two types now, which are the old school cones, which are about an inch, inch and a half in length, yay big. Uh, I love these things. I love these things because they are a nice little cone. And on the side, you can see a little divot right here. That is where they stamp into what cone it's supposed to be fired to. Uh, this one is 018, I think. Yeah, 018, got it on the box right here. Lots of specialty fires when you're going to those levels. Um, got a cone eight, cone O2, cone five, which is your traditional ones. Cone, o, cone 05, 04, 06. Um, these cones, they all come in slightly different colors. Some are red, some are gray. Uh, I have some that are green, uh, which are bars. And the reason they're bars, and they kind of started changing these up. Uh, the reason they changed them to bars is so that when you put them into the little prongs for the um, thermocouple, <clears throat> the bar gave you an even measurement. So no matter where you sat it, it would be an even consistent firing job where it would, it would bend or break in half during the firing. Uh, I prefer the cones personally because then I could shift if I want to fire just a little higher than 05, but not fully hit 06, just slide it down to where, or let's use the big cone so it's easy to see. I would slide it down into, in my, in the thermocouple to change that firing temp just slightly. So when you set it in, you'll, you have the pin, technically it's like this, isn't it? drops in half and, and, and it closes it out. You'll set the pin in there, you'll set the cone in there just like so. And during the firing process, this pin will drop and break this in half. Do be careful because as you are doing this, not the way that this stuff was designed, uh, your firings can not fire correctly. And because this is so thick on this side, 
versus the thinness on this side. Want to fire a little longer, put it towards the thicker end. Fire a little shorter, fire towards the the this end because it'll break faster. Know how that works so that as you're doing it, you want to make sure that um, that it actually turns off. So don't do don't test this. Uh, don't do this if you've never done this, but don't test it on the fly if you don't know how kilns work. I mean, it's one of those things you just be cautious about what you're doing. Uh, don't want you to burn down your building. Don't take any responsibility if you do. That's on you. That's your disclaimer right there, disclaimer. Don't do it if you think that it might burn down your building. Be cautious. Not taking responsibility for, for, your, for your actions. Hope that works out for you guys. Okay guys, that does it really for me for today's lesson. If Hope that you guys got something out of today's class. As always, if you have a question, comment, or just want to give us a shout out, throw it down in the comments below. Just raise your hand down in the comments below there. Uh, as always, I look forward to hearing from my class, seeing you guys uh, next class as well. Until then, see you guys later next class. Ciao.